before we go on, I gotta show y'all something. Not this, this thing what I gotta show y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, I did a consult yesterday with some young man. And this young man, is my aunt! Um, this young man and I were talking. Right after I got off the phone with this young man, I told him that I was doing this for y'all. You know, he and I had a discussion and we were talking about several documents. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the document that I produced on Friday. This document, when I produced it on Friday, this is demand for proof of power of attorney. Now, this is a template, ladies and gentlemen. We're putting this template up there for y'all. We're going to read this document, and we're going to read the next one. Hey, Isley Brothers, y'all hold on, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that I've heard this song when it first came out. Y'all yeah, met old. And when this song first came out, I did not even know it was the Isley Brothers. To this day, I only knew it was the Isley Brothers as a result of now, this moment. Prior to that, I, I'm not a, I don't listen. When I grew up, I wasn't listening to the Isley Brothers. Yeah, their main songs, uh, you know, the, I didn't like In Between the Sheets, never have. But the main songs I knew. But, hold on now. This particular song, I only knew because of it coming on the radio. I didn't listen to who it was by. Because it's your thing. Oh, do what you want to do. That's all I knew. Because I can't tell you who to sock it to. I always thought that sock it to me thing, that was all right. But that's all I knew about the song. I didn't know who sung it until tonight. Well, now I know. And that's half the battle. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry. We got some clouds rolling in. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. It rained in Northern California. This is the tail end of that storm that's going to be coming through tomorrow. They say we're going to get a little bit of rain on Tuesday, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm kind of appreciative because the clouds are going to keep the temperatures pretty warm. There's not going to be as cold as it was this morning. This morning, it was 30 degrees. 30 degrees? 30 degrees. Let me tell you something. Ooh, man. I done had the third degree before, but that third degree was a little bit too cold. Okay, so here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Demand for proof of power of attorney. Many of you guys are having individuals take you to court and you're dealing with attorneys on the other side and they're doing all this other stupid stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I have spoken and communicated with several companies who told me that I had to speak with their attorney or if they didn't, it was an issue involving an attorney that I had to provide proof that I had the authority to speak on their behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, an attorney, that's all they do is speak on someone else's behalf. Do you not know that there must be a power of attorney? Now, I've been saying this for years to people, and I've been demanding it in all court cases, but I never really pushed the issue. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a template. You put the attorney's name here, you put your name there, and then 
is referencing private business between private parties involving a private contractual agreement. So stay out of our business is what you're saying. Literally, just that simple. Now, like I said, this was done on Friday. I did mine on Friday. Clearing up a misunderstanding, it appears that you have a misunderstanding. This is a private matter, and as such, your claim that you represent a party involving personal and private information does not come with the attachment of a demanded and necessary, uh, excuse me, of the demanded and necessary proof of power of attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, demand it because you're doing it now. You're demanding that they provide proof of power of attorney. You claim to be an attorney, which means that you're familiar with the following. Put about five cases here, ladies and gentlemen. Additionally, and this is from America's jurisprudence, additionally, a power of attorney should be evidenced by an instrument in writing. A power of attorney must be acknowledged by the principal. So you have a right to see that, that they have the right. The principal, it, you'll see what, what the principal is all about. Form number 13 is captioned, general power of attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, you never do a general power of attorney. But this is the courts. This is how the courts do it. That's why every time they give you an attorney, it's always general. You always tell the court that I am only authorizing limited power of attorney. Not general. Always limited, ladies and gentlemen. Always limited power of attorney. Okay. Back to general, ladies and gentlemen. Form 13 is captioned, general power of attorney. And in addition to the grant of authority, uh, to the grant of authority must be dated and signed by the person granting the power, including their title if they are signing for a partnership or a corporation, and also setting forth their address. The power of attorney must be acknowledged by the person signing it. Official form number 14 is captioned, special power of attorney and must be executed and acknowledged in the same manner as form number 13. This is actually from a court case, ladies and gentlemen. This one involves an attorney representing a partnership or a corporation. So yes, they must have a power of attorney. Now here's the thing. Usually um, facilities or whatever will retain an attorney and have them on retainer. That's where the word comes from. They will have that attorney on retainer. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Even if the attorney is on retainer, that does not cover your case. Your case is specific. And so there must be some type of a letter of attorney authorizing that individual to represent that corporation. This is what the issue is, ladies and gentlemen. The attorneys don't have a power of attorney in most cases. The reason why they don't have a power of attorney is because the attorney, if he violates the law, that company becomes responsible for that violation. They have liability. And because of that, uh -uh, they won't just hire any attorney to represent them. Oh, no. <laughs> Which is why the attorneys volunteer, especially if it's a foreclosure. Some of you have dealt with a case where you've had three or five or six different attorneys coming at you. And they just keep coming and keep coming no matter when they lose. Because the attorneys tell them, I'll take care of the fee, I'll follow, I'll do all the filing, if I win, I get a percentage, blah, blah, blah. That's how they do it. They work on a contingency. Okay, so, demand the power of attorney. Do you know why? Well, let's find out. This is Strong versus Jones. Strongly relied upon by the debtor is the inapplicable, or excuse me, is as inapplicable as that case involved an actual power, written power of attorney. The issue presented in that case was whether the agent had the authority to do certain acts under the power of attorney. That a power of attorney in writing is crucial, said Judge Murphy. Observed in the Court of Appeals in Klein versus West, I think this is the Fifth Circuit. Powers of attorney are strict construed and are held to grant only those powers that are clearly delineated. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever go to court and you have to get an attorney, say, hey, 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 hold on now. 
You want to appoint an attorney for me? Well, thank you. Uh, limited power. Uh, you don't have full power to grant. No, 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 no. Limited power of attorney. That's the only thing I'm giving. You're going to appoint him. It's my appointment. I'm the one who appoints the attorney. You're getting that authority from me. If you're going to get it from me, then you're going to get it limitedly. Okay? It's limited power of attorney, ladies and gentlemen. Do not grant full power of attorney. Do not grant general power of attorney. That's what the judges give the attorneys. That's why they get to be officers of the court. That's why they get to be officers of the court. Okay? Start challenging that presumption that he has full power of attorney. That's why you can't speak. Do you understand? That's why you must only speak through the attorney, because you gave the court your power of attorney to appoint an attorney for you. So you gave the court full power of attorney. Do not let the court appoint an attorney for you. Tell them you can assign an attorney, but no, you don't get to appoint them. No, no, the power of appointment is mine. You have limited power. So you can assign an attorney, but he will be my attorney, not the court's. Pay attention. All right, to be valid, a statutory short form power of attorney must be signed and dated by the principal with capacity for doing so, with the signature of the principal duly acknowledged in the manner prescribed for the acknowledgement of the conveyance of real property, which means notarized. That's why California has an all-purpose acknowledgement. That's, it's called an all-purpose acknowledgement. Citing general obligations law, internal quotation marks, uh, and alterations omit it. Let's go here. You will provide that power of attorney dated prior to the letter that you sent, signed by the principal, or I will charge you with interference with my private business in this private matter, and as a result of your attempt to harassment, attempt to the fraud to mislead for some type of gain and conspiracy with others has caused me a great deal of mental stress and anguish, anxiety, worries, insomnia, agitation, distress, confusion, so that you and I can meet before a jury whereby we can talk about the definition of fraud and conspiracy and the elements associated there too. Now, if you fail to provide the information, a power of attorney signed and dated by the principal prior to your alleged claim of retention, I will then um, proceed to file with the Bar Association, the State Bar. Remember, there are three Bar Associations, ladies and gentlemen. You have the State Bar, such as the California Bar Association. Then you have the American Bar Association, two separate associations, not the same. And then you have the court bar. Usually the attorneys are registered with all three. And if there is a federal court, usually they're also registered with the federal courts to do federal cases. Okay, so you let them know you're going to do all four bars. And the bar of the court for this county and the federal district court. My complaint against you for the unethical conduct. You are a learned individual. You know better. So, do not ever think it is okay for you to assume the role of slave master. You don't command or order or tell me the way things are ever. So you don't get to tell me the way things are. <laughs> Never are you given that authority. If this information referencing these issues, oh, it's not supposed to be because. Oh, no, 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 that is correct. Uh, okay, it's supposed to be cause you any discomfort. So that's what that is. Sorry. These issues cause you any discomfort. Please take this advice because you're giving them some legal advice. Please take this advice and seek legal counsel and or talk to your spiritual advisor with help to alleviate such stress and or discomfort. And until such time, I will continue to communicate with the principal respecting my interests and will discuss with them the nature of my complaint without any interference from outsiders. 
this shall serve uh, this shall service legal notice. It's supposed to be sorry about, about this, ladies and gentlemen. It's voice recognition, and I was tired. This shall serve as legal notice. You are hereby commanded to cease and desist any and all further attempts to harass, intimidate, threaten, and or coerce this witness, petitioner, claimant, party, any further attempt at communication without the supplying of the aforementioned information and or continual violation of any prescribed due process fundamental principles of law will result in the filing of a complaint against your person as delineated herein. I truly would like to thank you for the opportunity of communicating this legal order and notification to your person, and I do hope that you have a very good day. Okay, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you type your name and you sign under your name, always. Type your name and sign under your name. Okay, let's get out of that practice of signing above our name. Sign underneath your name. Okay, by law, the document only needs a signature. That's the law. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, I created another document for you guys, not for me. Well, technically, I did it for me, but I decided to make it into a template for y'all. Okay, this is a notice of change of address. So, notification of change of address. To whom it may concern, you can put whomever it is, but technically, you can do to whom it may concern. You'll end up putting a case number here if there is a case number. Okay, you enter your name here. Private business between private parties involving a private contractual agreement. That's what it's referencing. Clearing up a misunderstanding. You are hereby notified that all communications henceforth are to be sent to the following address in the following format. Let me make this U capitalize. Okay. Enter your address here. So technically, this should be enter your name here. The address goes on the next line. N A M M M M M E M M M M M. Okay. The street, city, and state, we put this purposely. Zip code exemption. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are non-domestic, you are zip code exemption. Only domestic mail must be with a zip code. Non-domestic mail does not need a zip code. Private mailbox, non-domestic, no bulk or parcels. You know how they like to send you a bunch of papers, 500 realms of paper, so that they can charge you for sending you all that paper? Uh-uh, not at my address. You don't get to send me no bulk mail at my address. Such notice shall be captioned. Notice of change of address. The notice shall contain only information pertaining to change of address and its effective date. This is the link for all of the case laws respecting what the court has said. Okay, and you'll notice that this document has everything that's required in a notice of change of address. You are hereby ordered and commanded to cease and desist sending any communication, any other format, to any other address other than that which is specified herein. I truly would like to thank you for the opportunity of communicating this legal order and notification to your person, and I do hope that you have a very good day. Okay? And ladies and gentlemen, literally, that's the end of the document. This is a notice of change of address. Those of you who want, and the law is, this is your address, not theirs. This doesn't belong to the post office. As long as you put an address that's deliverable, they don't have a choice. So you don't need a zip code. And again, PMB, I try not to use abbreviations anymore. So that's why you see I spelled everything out. So I try not to use abbreviations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, many of you, this will come in handy. I do hope that it helps. And ladies and gentlemen, I am definitely going to have to ask that you guys have a very good day, a cold kind of smile, because I was tired. I'm about to go lay down and go to sleep. I've been up since before 4 o'clock this morning, so it's after 6, going on 7. Ladies and gentlemen, that is way too much time, and i got to stop doing this, but right now i got to get that. Pay attention. Someone had just emailed me about the court case with the Supreme Court where they decided that the note and the promissory note and the deed of trust must go hand in hand. Look, I told you I don't have the full results of the case. I only had a brief uh, discussion with a person regarding the case. I only presumed what the Supreme Court decided. 
I don't have any final saying from the Supreme Court just yet because I haven't called the person and I will call the person. She and I will speak, but that will be later, not right now, okay, because that person has a life. And so I am not going to bug the person, but I will be contacting them this week to get that information, okay? That's that. Now, the other thing about the several questions, several constitutional questions, that document, I just have to edit it, okay? But I'm going to be doing it on the other computer, not on this one. And so that's what the delay is. I'm still getting that computer ready for me to use. So that's what's taking up all of my time. So I as apologize, okay? That document will get finished. It will get up. Again, with what I got to work with, I was doing the very best I can. So it's your thing. Hey! It's your thing. Do what you want to do. That was the Isley Brothers, ladies and gentlemen. You know what, Renee and Angela? Uh, uh, no, not, not right now. Uh-uh, y'all, y'all not doing that to me right now. They, I guess they're gonna do it. This is, y'all know who this is. This is the group that don't like excuses. They don't want no excuses. They want reasons, y'all. And so, we got the group that likes only reasons. I'm craving your body. This is real. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta go because temperatures are rising and I don't know how it feels to be real. Y'all take care of yourselves. I will speak to y'all later. And thank y'all for being here. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being anywhere. But anything to be said, thank you for being. Y'all have a good day. Gotta go.